Okay. Well, it's 3 o'clock. Why don't we call the regular selectmen's meeting to order, and then if at the end of it we need to go back and take okay. a look at anything else in the budget, we'll do that. But sure. We'll go through this. Privilege of the floor. There's nobody here. <laughs> Let's move right on. Approval of the minutes of November 12th. I took a look at them. I did not see anything that... I had a question on the Leslie Roseborn paragraph. No. What? Yeah, but it's nothing. It's just what my memory is fuzzy on it, but I think it gets to what I need to, need to, to now that I read it again. No, it's all right. I mean, it's not the, that there was wording wise, there's some things that I would change, but it's not. I mean, yeah. I think no, I, I understand it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll Is make there a motion else? to approve it. All right. Um, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Financial update. Um, well, that's really been happening as we've gone through the budget. Right. Do you have. Is there anything outside of the budget that you have any questions on? No, at this stage, what we, you need to go back. Let's just just you're going to go back and take a look at the changes we yes. made and redo those spreadsheets. Yes. We still need to go over those personnel sheets, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And through Before those I wage comparison changes. sheets. That's All correct. Right. Okay. Why don't we Why don't we do that at the end of the selectmen's meeting? Is there anything else at this stage we need? I, I noticed that um, you gave us the. Uh, I, I've updated the, the CIP right. uh, and updated the debt uh, chart. Um, right. I I think we're pretty much tracking. Um, there's not really any appreciable differences um, as we talked about. Um, I, I'm just yesterday. curious. Uh, it, it, well, oh, this assumes that we're doing new borrowing. This assumes that we're doing any borrowing that is in the CIP right right now. So that's through 2020. Okay. Okay. So this incorporates the in, the entire CIP. Um, and as we talked about yesterday, the 680,000 uh, debt service number for this year mm -hmm. is the peak. And you can see that on the purple line. Those numbers, those are the annual mm -hmm. principal payments right. on our debt. And, and those principal payments do include the new borrowing that's in the CIP, which includes the ladder truck, the trash truck, the Okay. Second phase of the buildings and everything. So that is if everything is approved. All right. So, Mark, there's a reason why these two numbers don't add up, right? It's not supposed to be. <laughs> but because yes. we have fiscal year 2015 on this sheet comes down to 235,000 on this one to 274. Uh, yes, because of the 25 and the 14 are not reflected on here on the CIP. These are these are special warrant articles. The Ray Center and the Power Cot lease okay. are are not on I'm the not CIP. On there. Okay. That's why okay. they don't. So they're warrant articles. Gotcha. <laughs> At least I knew the answer. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So if you want them in the CIP, I'll add them there, but they're not technically yeah. part of the mm -hmm. CIP right now. Okay. Okay. I think, you know, one of the, well, that, that, that's, doesn't, it's, it's, you really can't, 
basically because we stopped the CIP in 2020, anything beyond that is really is irre is is really irrelevant. Yeah, do you want I mean, me we're to not gonna we're not gonna go to zero borrowing, you know, for the next ten years after that. No, but do you want me to cut the chart off there? Um, or I mean, I, I would, I, because I, I, I don't, th I don't think it's accurate. Uh, that's uh, that would be my only point. You know, I do sure. it for the length of time that the CIP, and you'd have to, you'd have to assume there was some level of borrowing going forward, or otherwise it's making this picture like, oh, well, don't worry, this like the deficit, no. it's like yeah, the government right. and the deficit. Oh, well, eight years from now yeah. it goes to zero. Um, it never does. Or, <laughs> or we simply have to say. Somewhere on here, note that beyond 2020, right. we don't have any capital projects there were, included. Right, in right. There, there, there haven't been. Right. There so is like, no capital can forecast take, beyond that. I can right. take our vehicle plan because that does go out 20 years, 30 yep. years. Um, you know, I can put at least the vehicle portions but on still here, but that's still not, yeah. it's yeah. not everything, yeah. for sure. Oh. Yeah, um, no, I, I just cut it off. Goes first. I, I, yeah. well, or, you or know, put a footnote, or, I mean, one of the other. 2020 right. is dotted lines instead of right. solid yeah, lines. Right, yeah, dotted lines, I mean, like these that. are, you know, yeah. projections yeah. as to, but, yeah. but they're not even projections because, if we were going to project this, we'd have to take our average level of capital spending and continue that for some period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can dot. I can definitely dot the the line after right. 2020, and put a note in that the plan only includes capital expenses through 2020. And the one, the one big project here in 2019, the 1.3 million. That's for that's phase two of the building. Phase two of which building? This, this building. This building. Yeah. Okay. It's twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Anything else on financial update? Anything you want to talk about? No, no, we'll come back and talk about personnel. Yeah. Department head updates. Rec. <laughs> Okay, let's see. We are gearing up for vacation week. Okay. And uh, we have three full slate of programs for that week. Uh, as I was explaining a little earlier, we uh, offered things like laser tag mm -hmm. several times and climbing every day to hopefully generate a little bit more revenue for that week. Um, hopefully our New Year's Eve party is the same attendance as it has been, about 70 kids for that, for the older kids program. We did bump the price of that up just a, a little bit, so um, hopefully that will help things out. And um, otherwise, we're just wrapping up the year, so. Okay. Mark, is there anything else? Or um, with no, the I, other think, departments? I think we're, the other departments, um, no public safety uh, is continuing to do their cleanup uh, upstairs and they're settling in. Um, they had their first medical call of the ski season up to the mountain today. So I did yeah. see the ambulance. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Was, just a was it bump, yesterday? Bump, a head bump. No, this morning. I thought yeah. they had one yesterday. Uh, they did go up to, but it was not a transport. Oh, today, okay. was a, today was a transport. So, um, but other than that, um, Things are quiet. Things are quiet. We did have an overnight um, uh, guest guest in the form of a snowstorm. Our our overnight crew was here literally all night, so they went home at noon time. Um, but uh, that's yeah, I was you know actually I looked outside last night about eight o'clock mm -hmm. and I didn't think there was that much snow out there. And then mm -hmm. I came by this morning in the morning and overnight I guess it picked up again, it, it right? Did. It, it just did. packed down. It just kept it didn't seem to be. Oh, it was very wet. For the well, long except time the, the, where the snowplow left the ridge in yeah. front of your driveway, that was just solid, like a rock. I yeah. mean, I was afraid to drive over it. You know, yeah. I figured I'd take my bumper off. It it was mm. a, it was forty degrees when I got up this morning. Yeah. In the morning, so yeah, it was, there was well, no snow down whatever. there. So got cut off at three mile turnaround. Okay. Down here well, that's good. Ah, right? uh, torrential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would, on our water, um, we we did our quarterly tests 
for the water department, right. water quality tests. Um, we did have the same as we had back in 2007. We had three of the units uh, tested with slightly elevated lead levels. Um, that is general. We have no lead pipes in our water system. The town owned portion. When but we if you say recall, slightly elevated, we're still within the. We're range? still, we're still within acceptable ranges, but now it's it's high enough to be a reportable note. And okay. it hadn't been in the past. N none of no, we have not had it since two thousand seven. This is okay. the first time since two thousand seven. But generally, what happens if the unit isn't used? Um, the water will collect an amount of lead in it and when we it shows up when we take the water test okay and the way you have to take the water test is you have to put the, the bottle right under and turn the tap on so you can't let it run for X number of minutes right um, so I just I want to let you know we're going to be we're going to be notifying these property owners um, and we'll do whatever the state DES requires us well, to do. What, when you say, what do we randomly pick a couple of houses to go check at their house? We, we have 10 sites around town right. that um, we have certified with the state as our testing sites okay. because of the distance they are from the wells and the locations Was around town. Was there considerable town. variation in the reading house to house or is it? Um, the milligrams per liter range. 0 0.009 to 0 0.11. So yeah, there was a there was a pretty big difference. But again, you know the 0, .0 yeah, that's 20 times. Yeah, greater. the 0 .009 0 0 .009 property may be a property that someone lives at and is using the water all of the time. The one that got the 0 .11 number could have been a unit that people haven't been there since June. I don't I don't know without talking to the owners to see when the last time they were there. But we have seasonal usage, so there are units where it sits. And there are units, especially older ones, that have lead pipe within the building. Mm -hmm. um, so um, but we do have a, a little notice that we send to them and we'll make telephonic contact with these three. Um, but again, it's the first time in seven years that we've had it and only the second time since I've been here. So, um, But when you test the water at, yeah. at, up in the tank at the well level, oh, we no. don't have no. Do we have lead there? No. There's no lead. There's no lead. So this is all in this. So actually, if this is a problem, it's a pro. It's an. It's the it's internal the, to the buildings. It's yes. it's a building problem. Mm -hmm. It's not a town problem. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's correct. Mm. Now okay. there may be some lead naturally occurring. I don't know. Um, so when I say that we don't have any lead, we don't have any reportable lead. Right. Okay. All right. Now I understand. We ought to try to, you know, you know this sa the, the sample sites, mm -hmm. you, have, you have no choice over where they are? Uh, just a little bit of choice because they've got to be, it's, you can't take them all like one right after the other in a certain No, but could we deliberately choose residences where people are living in them? We have tried to do that in the past, yes. <laughs> we have tried. Yes. Okay, yeah. Because it, it seems to me to be silly to be taking samples in, in houses that are rarely where the water isn't turned on. Right. Yeah. Well, we've also had in the past um, a good relationship with property managers where we could go in the day before. Oh, I the see. Water. There you go. Right. And well, no, and that's, you know, to. To get, to, to, to to get, get the a water. good sample on the day that we take the, the sample. sample. It's just you can't run the water the, at the moment you take mm. the sample. You're supposed to, as an example, our we used to take them at our condo. You got to get up in the morning before anything has been turned on, go to the sink and take the sample right then because they want a sedentary overnight sample. But we uh, uh, we know the units that uh, where we're going to take the sample in advance. Yes. 
I think I think I, I think your strategy is worthwhile. We should notify all of the people that involve that they need to get their property manager in the day before the sample is taken to come down and run the water. Because otherwise, the consequences, if, if somebody fails this test, what are they going to make them do? Well, I don't know. That's what I. That's what we are contacting DES. Yeah, to find I out asked that. If you fail the test, what are they going to do? To tear the plumbing out? I know DES won't make them tear the plumbing out. It's, they're going to come back to us and say, you got to take care of your lead problem. Well, it's not our lead problem. It's not our lead problem. So there isn't a whole lot more we can do than notify the property owners. What if someone? I, I hate to drone on about this, but if somebody failed the test, what would we do? Uh, back in two thousand seven, we notified them that they failed the test and, and suggested that's they. Had to, and, that's and all we had to do. Is just notify them. them. Okay, that's correct. All right. Yep. Yeah. It probably wouldn't hurt to send a note out to all the property managers for these right. test sites and let them know right. that you don't want to fail this test and what you need to do is the day before we're scheduled to do it, we'll let you know. You need to go in and turn the water on right. for a while. Okay. Okay. Calendar reviews. Our what do we need to do here in December relative to the budget that we haven't done? We need to, in December, do we need to do a final wrap-up or, um, or is that January? I think, I think the beginning of January. Let okay. us close the books in December for revenues and expenses. And you know, get because um, you really need to update the revenue update numbers. The revenue numbers. And okay. All of that. All right. And so there's nothing budget-wise that we need to do. We are scheduled to meet on what? The seventeenth? No. Today's well, the tenth. Well, today's the tenth. So tenth. Christmas so Eve. Christmas Eve would be the twenty-fourth. Well, yes, that would be our fourth. Right. Wednesday of the month. Could we tenant? I don't know if anyone's leaving for the holiday. Well, the t 24th um, is the town luncheon. Right. If there, are you planning to attend the luncheon? Sure. Yeah. If there's something that we needed to do, could we, at the end of the lunch, sure. could we? Uh, don't we have to post you, a meeting? You'd post yeah, it. You'd, we're going to post day. it. If you're all going to be here, I'll yeah, post I it right. for noontime. Okay. But the lunch and is probably going to be over at the silver. Uh, it can e yes, it probably will be, but there's no saying that we can't post it for over there. Right. Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll do that, and okay. then if in case we need a meeting, we've got it notified in the rest. Right. I, we probably don't, and then we'll leave it at that. Okay. okay? Sure. All right. Anything yeah, else on yeah, calendars? Coming no. You're coming what to what lunch. time is the lunch? Is it 11 30? You're coming to lunch. Right. I'll make sure I'll make those arrangements. All right. What time is the lunch? The lunch starts at noon. Okay. Lunch is at noon. That sounds about right. Okay, any new business? <laughs> um, no, I talked to you about that. Oh, um, you have a piece of paper in front of you. New business as in, like, new So it's on the business. agenda? Yes. <laughs> so the only piece I, that we received today yeah. was this piece of paper right there in front of you, Bill. Okay. No, other one. The other one. On the... This one. Okay. Oh, okay. It's hiding from computer. This is our notification from Department of Revenue Administration that they have completed their... Um, property value ratio study. Um, if you look at uh, the median ratio is the ratio that they use um, to determine our equalized valuation for the year. So DRA will be using 90.05%, um, which means right now, well, first of all, let me look, talk, look at the we rest of We are just, uh, if I we read this correctly, we just squeak by. Well, yes, we just squeak by in our 90 to 110 right. allowance. If you look at the PRD of 1.05. What does PRD stand for? Uh, the, what, now I, if you hadn't asked me, I would just say it. Um, 
I don't know. Now I can't remember. But I will find out for you. It's a confidence um, interval. The... Well, let go on. The, the PRD is supposed to be right around 1. That's what they are looking for. Right. And ours is at 1.05, so we're fine there. The coefficient of dispersion, the COD, right. is anything below 21 is acceptable to the state. Okay. Um, so obviously um, the 13.2% uh, is very good. 13% is very good. So um, uh, again, refresh me, uh, Mark. The 90 means that we're basically underassessed. That's correct. Underassessed. We are underassessed. So by 10%. By 10 so $500,000, a property that we have assessed for $500,000, this is saying is probably closer at market value than 550. Have, have, have prices been increasing the last couple of years? Do you know? They're kind it's, of holding the it's, same? It's all over the place because yeah. we're having a bunch of units that are just about to close in the next week or two Yeah, that are selling at very low prices. But it's it's low low priced, low priced units. Meaning low the price. lodge units are selling at, at very, very low prices. Okay. Uh, the condo large units. The, even the, the price large units. Price related differential. That's it. What is it? Sorry? Price, Pr price related, related differential. differential. Well, that's as clear as it is. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is Wikipedia, I have it. <laughs> yes, we'll. It, the price related differential measures vertical inequities. Mm, indicating assessment regressively. Hold Still on. very clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But there, are, there are a whole bunch of properties that have sold that aren't in this mix that have sold for less than than their assessed valuation. Than their assessed valuation, as well as less what people paid for them. And right. There's going to be a lot of them this year. Okay. We so okay. maybe we ought to hold. You know, not. But then again, we have... The Wait till we right. show up with a problem. Yeah, it's... But we have an example. We have, uh, like the house on Drakesbrook Road, without using someone's name, that sold for $1.4 million. Right. Screwed everything up. Well, no, it's assessed at $1.1. Right. right. So it's come over, but it would cost $2.1 to build. Right. So there's these, all these... It's, it's not a an easily mapped out question, but when we come in with stuff, we're going to find stuff is selling for lower than the assessed value. Lower than the assessed value, which means when they do these ratios right. again next year, they'll have maybe look better. Hopefully it'll yeah. go up to 95%. Well, well, yeah. um, get off of the so 90. You don't get any worse than 90. On the PRD, what it measures is for a, a high-priced um, property, that and th it compares the high price properties and the low price properties and it measures the inequalities in the differences on their sale value so you have a million dollar home how close to a million dollars is that selling and then you have a hundred thousand dollar property how close to a hundred thousand dollars is that selling and so it's measuring that the the difference in the differences, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. it, between the high and the low. So the closer it is to one, that just means that everything is whether it's high value or low value, it's selling for close to what the ninety percent is. So we're, in other words, we're we're ten percent low on everything. The closer to one we are on the PR, PRD. Okay, now mm -hmm. the the method they actually use to construct these ratios is looking at actual selling actual price sales compared to assessed value. To the assessed values. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And they throw out any transactions that are not arm's length transactions. Right. So refinances, sales to 
Four, four, four relatives, four relatives, trust, foreclosures, changes, trusts, all yeah. of that stuff is thrown out. That okay. is not a not a good sale. All right. So have they said anything? They just sent these numbers. Because they, they just were all we true. just got them. Yeah. And so when when we get phone calls and people ask us what the what the equalization ratio is, it's going to be this 90, 90 right. point. Well, it'll be nine. Which, which, which basically relates to the state tax, the state and county, state and portions county of the tax rate. Yeah, yeah. They're going to take ninety percent of our tax evaluation, correct? No, they're going to they're they're gonna gonna increase it by ten percent. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a fifty percent chance of getting that one right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, what were we last year? Uh, 94? 94. 94. So we're heading in the wrong direction. Well, no. Well, depends on how you look at it because we're headed in the right direction for property values because it means that property values, according to the sales, and you know, we'll given what going. Mike says, at least the property values are going up. Yeah, but it could be heavily distorted by one transaction. Right. It, in our town, yes, that can happen. Right. No, if you had a case where the assessed value was one one, sales price is one four, that's gonna have that's gonna have a big weighting impact. It is. That's why. I yeah. Okay. Well. And actually, some of these lodge units, now that I'm, I'm thinking clearly, are selling above their assessed value, but still way below what people paid for them. Oh, uh, yes. meaning that Black Bear Lodge units uh, are assessed at sixty-two one, right? And Golden Eagle are looked at, and they're selling in the sixty fours. Okay, but people had them listed at seventy-nine. Yeah, right. But remember, we had them assessed at above seventy-nine years ago. Seventy-nine. Yeah. Well, five years ago. That's years ago to me. Well, I know it is, yeah. but in this, we remember we right, trimmed no, twenty percent from our I total that. valuation. Right, mm -hmm. we went from three sixty, three hundred and sixty-three million, down to the low three teens yeah. in, in our total in, in valuation. In hindsight, it, it appears now that that the the move to to, to and when we did the last assess, we really cut the value of condos right. in relationship to single family mm -hmm. homes. Single family homes kind of stayed the sure. same. Maybe we cut it too much. You know, that's what it appears to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll Thank see. You, yeah. Let's see. We'll wait for the number to get bad. I mean, what what is it? What are we doing with us? Are we still doing the sample thing? I know Mr. Neater died there. So, mm -hmm. well, we have nothing scheduled. We have no statistical update or anything scheduled for 2016. We have not. I mean, 15. Just, what had we have been ten thousand in the budget we were, though? Huh? Don't we have ten thousand in the budget for it? Oh, that's yeah, to do with abatements and the rest of That this? has okay. to do gotcha. with the abatements and their regular pickups. We we have not budgeted any work for them to do statistical St updates. Statistical updates. But if we did a statistical update, can we actually adjust? Yes. You can adjust property values off of the statistical update. And I think we did that in the past, didn't mm -hmm. we? We All we're going to end up doing is shifting the burden mm -hmm. from from um, people who own single-family residences to condos. I mean, all it's going to do is change the mix. It's not going to change the amount of taxes we raise or anything, no. like increasing right. the assessed valuation. It shifts the burden from one group to another group. I don't know. What do you feel? I, 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 I think let it go. For now, yeah. Yeah. Let's see what we come I up mean, with for this. I mean, because the last time that we had increases, it was the single-family right. homeowners that... Took the big increase. Took the right. big right. increase, yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, any other news here? No, thanks. No, old, old business. Quickly, we want to... The dog? Yeah. I, I rewrote this thing so that you <coughs> read the, This is the way the ordinance would read. Do you want us to open the one to Sharon? Yes. I got that room here. Much of this is just the same. I'll point out the differences. Most of these ordinances has some background statement that puts it in some context. Sure. This ordinance did not. 
Right. So I added a background statement. It's the one at the top, basically saying that, you know, well, we can put in whatever we want. Item number one is exactly the same as it was, so there's no change. We've added item number two and items number three. Uh, so item number two says now, in public spaces occupied by more than 25 persons, all dogs must be physically restrained. And in public spaces, the owner or keeper of dog is responsible to clean up any waste, saying it's not really necessary state law, but um, it wouldn't hurt to have it in there. And item number four, what I'm saying is any person authorized by the Board of Selectmen may require that a dog be physically restrained in the interest of public safety. I'm not even sure we need to put that in and imply it in the rest of the rest of the statement is what's in the current ordinance right now, which is any person authorized may seize, impound, and restrain a dog in violation of this ordinance. Um, what do you, but what do you do with them after you do? Well, you got to go. You got to go take them someplace. Yeah. You have to you have to right. deliver them to a person or shelter authorized to board dogs, I, which is part of the reason why I assume we don't do that. Do it very well because there is no person authorized to board right. dogs, you know. So what are you going to do? Drive out of the valley to get rid of the dog? I mean, that that is the issue. Right. I mean, that's the issue that our public safety. And, and then the item number five basically is. stays the same. That's okay. the fines. I'm mm -hmm. not proposing that we change because we're not finding people. And this one again says you're actually authorized to find them on the first offense. We don't do it, right. but um, we'd be authorized. I only had a, a couple of things, and I'm going sure. back to your original. Um, yeah. I'm not sure that we have defined what public spaces are. Yeah, I left it pretty vague. Um, I, I, um, I do. Do we want to try and do that, <laughs> or do we w just want to say? I, 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 it's a town-wide thing, and it doesn't yeah. have to do with public space. Well, it has to do with any space. What I wanted to do was basically differentiate it from private, own, you know, like like your own lot. If you had a party on your own lot, mm -hmm. you want to let dogs run around on your lot. That's your business, in mm -hmm. my mind. Mm -hmm. But town square is private property. But I consider it to be public. Public. It's a public yeah. access space. Because they allow the public on it. So if there were more than 25 dogs in town square at any given point in time, you'd have to... 25 people. 25 people. I'm sorry. All right. you'd, you'd have to get your dog okay. on a leash. I think this works perfectly because I can give you the, the situation where I think it applies. If you want to go run your dog on Packard's Field by yourself, you're fine. Right. If, but you're, if, if you're watching a soccer, soccer game, game you're in trouble. you've got to be restrained. You, you can't let your dog run around. And okay. I think that accomplishes what we need to do. Right. And the public land, I agree, Mike. I right. think that's, but I, I don't know how to get it to apply to town square. Well, I think it's town a public square space. because the public is invited. It's got to be considered public land. You don't pay an inf it's a public you don't space. you don't pay a fee to use it, and there's no restrictions on who can go into to it. It's not restricted, and it, it's not restricted access. So by definition, to me, it's a public space. Now, if lawyers got to court. Could we argue? You know, but I'm not worried about lawyers taking us to court on these things. I mean, we're just trying to get some framework to operate. No, in. right. And I think I might actually think about approaching uh, Mr. Sununu in terms of uh, town square and, and suggest to him maybe he wants to think about it, it, it's his privilege to ban. You know, all dogs must be on leashes all the time in town square. I mean, he can he can impose that rule. Now we can't. I don't think. Uh, right, and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, uh, and I, uh, I agree with that. And that's exactly the point that I'm making. Though is I'm not sure that we can by ordinance say, because in in this is, instance, if Town Square, if there was just one person walking through Town Square, then my dog does not have to be on a leash. It's correct. But if but if it's a Saturday morning. And there's 50 people there. Then the dog has. Then you got to get leash. your dog on a leash. And I'm and I'm not sure how we enforce. I, I yeah, we'll we'll think about it and see how we. Well, he, my suggestion that. on enforcement, and I, I I only brought one copy. I think there's a couple. I think the problem we have, more than anything, is is dogs at large, right. yeah. people that are letting dogs out and running around. All right, Under, not without any supervision. 
And I think the only effective way to deal with any of this is to start some kind of a public relations campaign and a little bit of a shaming campaign. Passing an ordinance is going to do nothing. I mean, it, likewise, all this does is it gives uh, uh, whoever we designate is someone who's got, you know, is a door control person or something. They could go to someone and say, hey, you know, in town square, in our town, when there are a lot of people here, we ask you to put your dog on a leash. Okay. Would you please comply? I mean, that's, that's as far as... And if we've got enough people to do that to Correct. enough yep. other people, I'm hoping that they'll conform. Mm -hmm. But whether we put them on an ordinance, whether we had an ordinance that says all dogs must be on a leash all the time, if nothing's going to happen. Right. Because we, who's going to enforce it? Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So we're going to need individuals that are willing to volunteer to, to essentially take the spirit of this thing and as best they can, you know, when they see violations, inform people, hey, that's not the behavior we use in this town. Right. And, and hopefully that'll start to make somewhat of a dent. Um, then I thought your suggestion on the dog waste is we ought to put up some yeah. on heavily trafficked areas, some bags and some garbage cans, is, you know, and I think and they may not have to be there year round. No, they may no. need to be there during vacation the summer. periods or yeah. during right. the summer. Or, as or long as they time. agree to empty them, that's yeah. always the problem. Yeah. Um, I don't think the town's going to run around and clean them. Right. But I mean, but we'll give them the supplies. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I don't see a problem with that. Um, here's another thing, and I know we can't address this as a selectman, but should we say anything in the ordinance that says, that on private property, including single-family homes, common areas of condominiums, those kinds of areas, that the associations or the owners may enact something stricter if they so desire. I think they have the right to enact something stricter anyway. Yeah, but they don't. See, part of the problem we have yeah. with the current ordinance is people don't really right. understand what it says. It refers right. out to state laws, okay. and, and people haven't read those things. And so, I, you know, if there was something yeah. we could do, even though we're not enforcing right. what happens on private property, but something we put in there that says mm -hmm. it's the responsibility of the owners of private property to follow this ordinance, they may and enhance it as they, they may enhance it or, as, as or make it more restrictive, but they yeah. cannot make it Less any looser. Yeah. If we said mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, to the point I was making earlier when the when the policemen were here, if you had a dog that bit somebody on private property, yeah. there's no reason why the policeman couldn't go oh, and can. investigate that incident. I, yeah. yeah, we got yeah, into that discussion. Yeah, yeah. The fact that it's private property doesn't prevent us right. from writing a regulation, as right. long as we apply it equally to everything. Right. Right. And my interpretation even of private property in terms of dogs at large, you got an electric fence as far as I'm concerned, then you've got your dog under control on your property. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to let your dog run around on your own property right. and you can't keep him on your property, you've got a problem. Yes. You know, because now your dog is no longer within your control, you know. And the other thing is, should we make a reference still to the RSA saying that there are state laws that relate to this and this is the RSA that relates to nuisance dogs, if you or nuisance. I don't know whether it's nuisance. Yeah, is there one nice. for for dogs that bite and another one for cleaning up poop? Or <coughs> yeah. Yes, there are. But it might be it might be good to have those, and particularly if this is something that's going to be posted on our website. Sometimes yeah. Yeah. there's a link where you can go. Yeah. You can. You know, hit the button and it'll take you if you care to read what the state right. law actually says. Right. Um, and it okay. might it might be it might be worth saying at the beginning of the discussion that basically um, the town of Waterville follows the state laws. Right. You know, or you know what okay. they are. Okay, we can we can add a statement. You know that um, the town mm -hmm. uh, you know enforces state regulations, and you'll have to give me the numbers. Yeah. 
on on both public and private property when notified. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So the only other thing that I can come up with after listening to everybody's suggestions as to what we want to do, that in addition to making the police door control, you know, we authorize them yeah. to do stuff. We may want to go around town and see if we can't get some volunteers, people who know dogs and basically understand the difference between a well-behaved dog and one that's not, and see if we can get some volunteers that want to become dog control officers and now, and we could appoint them. Now, I'm not going to appoint somebody that's, you know, I mean, you got to try to enforce the ordinance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we might get some additional people that could, you know, for a while, walk around and let people know what the rules and regulations are. Maybe even make up a little pocket card. Well, here, here's a little cheat sheet of some things you need to pay attention to. Yeah, I don't think we can call them enforcement agents. I think we have to call them informational agents. Well, it's yeah, any person. We're opening ourselves up to what if someone gets right. bit by the dog, or what if the right. dog freaks out? Well, well I'm, I'm, gonna I'm just seeing so yeah. many negatives just because of our society, not because of what we're trying yeah. to do. Yeah, and I. Yeah, we'll have to have a training program of some. We could do some voluntary yeah, thing. Yeah, sure. I mean, but yeah. but there's nothing wrong with ha what you want to do. I think is get behavior where you have an individual confronts another individual and says, "Well, you know, look, look, you're on Packers Field. There's 75 people. You got to get you. You need to. You really need to put your dog on a leash." Right. Right. And uh, um, I think we all should be able to have that capability to just say that. Well, and that's the point yeah. that. Someone right, but Willie Peckham made, made, made yeah. that point that uh, we all that need to. We just take, all need to say to right. do it in a kind, yeah, right. mm -hmm. beneficial yeah. manner. Right, and then if somebody refuses to comply, call the police. Call the police. Right, and have yeah. the police come down, and pay right. attention to it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll add those two items now. What is the actual mechanism, Mark, that we need to do? This will need to be a warrant article. So when do we need to adopt this buy-in? Do we need to have a public hearing? You will need to have a public hearing probably At the point in time we adopt it. At the point in time when I think it's a good idea for you as a board to have a public hearing for when you decide to put it on the warrant. But okay. when do we have to do it by? But you have to do it by at least by the middle of January, so that if there's co have that public hearing by the middle of January, mm. so that if you want to change any wording or add something to it, you can have another. If public we hearing. come, if we come, if I draft this up, yep. All right, and uh, come into a meeting. Now we haven't adopted it, right? But notice that at the next selectmen's meeting, yep. we're going to have a public hearing to discuss some changes to the dog control ordinance, mm -hmm. right? come in and present this, Yes. listen to any public comments, and sure. then after that vote, after decide that. whether to adopt it or not adopt it or amend it. Or change it, yeah. you know. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you say work, adopt, you're sponsoring, you're it. sponsoring it to the right. warrant. Right. Yes. right. We're going to sponsor right. this to the warrant. Yes. Okay. okay yeah. I, I think we should do this as quickly as possible yes. because yep. I don't want to be in a situation where we miss a date or right. someone right. else misses yeah. a date. Now, if someone in the meeting, town meeting yeah. in the town meeting wants to amend this article in a way that says everything's got to be on a leash, can they do that? Because I know there are limits as to what amendments can or cannot do. Changes. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Jay tomorrow, but I don't believe they can amend this because it, it changes. notice, right, if they change the intent of right. this, then it was not noticed. Right. And so you would have to start over again, I, I believe. But I, I'll verify right. that. Tomorrow. No, I, th I think you're right, right with that one. Then I hear this is just my opinion. Then mm -hmm. I think we owe Marilyn a call mm -hmm. and say, look, where you could tell her, look, the essence of what we're going to do is emphasize, first of all, enforcing the current ordinance. We're going to tighten it up a little bit in terms of in public spaces, <coughs> we're going to require dogs. Yep. There's a lot of people present, you're going to get it on a leash. Right. Be, but if that, because her only recourse is she wants to push everything is on a leash, she's got to go get a, she got to write an article and get a petition. I think she's doing that and already. She's doing that already. She's called us and, and told us that, basically. She's working on that. 
Okay, so we'll have two warrant officers you on could, there. Yes, if she gets her. And we just have to tell people you can't vote yes for both. That's correct. <laughs> it's got to be one or the other. Can't it be one or the other? Yep. But okay. it is your choice. It is your choice what the order is, where the and how it's endorsed. The warrant. Huh? And how it's endorsed. No, you cannot. We can, you we you can, cannot endorse hers or or recommend disapproval. Of no, hers. but we can recommend but ours. Yes, we and can. And not recommend hers. Yes, you can. I think we'll, we'll take we, ours for. I think yeah. we take ours first. Well, which well, we we certainly have a, a right to say that the selectmen do not endorse this warrant article. We've done that. You you do it. Not on a petition, Darden, no. you haven't done it. Oh, okay. That no, be. not on a petition. You but can't. you have a right in the meeting but you have to a right express in the meeting. your opinion. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I don't think you can You can say whether or not you recommend it. Good. Thank you for your work on this, Bill. So we'll go in and we'll try to, and I would suggest we take it first. One of us will take and explain, look, what here's what we, you know, after listening for everybody yep. for a year, here's what we think is the problem, that it's right. primarily at-large dogs. And we really need to, to, to go off in a campaign mm -hmm. to try to get that under control. That has nothing to do with what you write on a piece of paper. It has everything to do with how you go about trying to enforce these mm -hmm. things. And, um, and, and then we'll take it from there. Right. We'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll write this up and I'll circulate it ahead of time so we can see it. Okay. All right. Any correspondence? No. No other old business, right? Privilege no. of the floor. There's no. nobody here. Board concerns? Any board no. concerns? No. 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 All right. Uh, we've got two domicile requests, so we need to go into non-public, right? On the domicile request. 